this is the Provoke Prawn, here to talk to you about various different problems with NVMe SSDs that you probably need to know, and some interesting things that you may not be aware of. So I recently did a video on this specific MSI motherboard, which allows for the installation of a PCIe Gen 5 NVMe SSD on the top slot. This is a Z790 motherboard, which if you use a Gen 5 drive in, can give you up to 12,000 megabytes per second read speed as you can see here with the Corsair MP700 Pro. Now you can fill this motherboard up with multiple NVMe SSDs and that's exactly what I did with multiple Gen 4 drives in there. But one downside is that using the top slot with a Gen 5 drive halves the number of PCIe lanes available to your graphics card. I did a separate video on what this means and the implications of it. And when I posted that video, I got a question from one of the viewers asking about what happens if you run a Gen 4 drive in that slot instead. Does it still half the number of lanes? or will it be fine? So since I happen to have a Corsair MP600 Elite with heatsink, which is another Gen 4 NVMe SSD, so the previous generation, I thought it would be worth testing out and seeing because my gut told me that a Gen 4 drive would be fine in here, but the specs suggest it wouldn't be. So we wanted to test it out and see. So I put it in there and then I put the motherboard back in the Evo RGB along with this Corsair A115 air tower cooler that was also testing at the same time and then went about testing. Now the thing that's interesting here is as I've said this motherboard's filled with NVMe SSDs and the speeds of those drives are all as expected so they are running as they should be but there are some implications to doing it specifically for this board. However, different boards have different experiences. So for example, this is the ASUS ROG Strix Gaming Wi-Fi 2, and this motherboard is my daily driver currently, another Z790 motherboard with multiple NVMe ports on it. Now this doesn't support Gen 5 NVMe SSDs, but you can fit loads of drives in there. Indeed, I've got five NVMe's running on this motherboard at the moment, and they all run at the correct speed. And this is interesting because it shows you the differences between them. You can see it here in the Lian Li Evo XL alongside the Lian Li Vision. So a few different tests here. And basically what you can do is you can fill this thing up with multiple drives and still get a good experience out of it. Now this speaks to some of the differences between them and I've seen a lot of different differences over the years with different motherboards having different implications depending on where you put your ports. And it's really important to check the specs and the motherboard manual and just the data on how these drives are handled because it can be quite different the impact that filling up a motherboard can have for example but you can see that filling up this motherboard with all the ports so multiple NVMe SSDs across the board all running at the right speeds with the right number of lanes and the right generation and yet still the graphics card is running at x16 PCIe Gen 4 so it's getting the right number of lanes too so in this instance it's fine now in fairness that doesn't have a Gen 5 drive but it's still massively populated. Historically I've seen older motherboards where it can really make a difference depending on what ports you fill up. Sometimes if you fill a motherboard up with NVMe SSDs that can actually slow down some of the other ones. So particular ports, let's say the top slot, if you put a drive in there you get the maximum speed out of it but doing so with then half the speed of the drives at the bottom of the motherboard or perhaps other issues. For example, I've found there are instances on older motherboards where if you fill up all the ports or if you fill particular ports that disables the SATA cables so that you can't then use your SSDs and hard disk drives on particular SATA ports so then you find your drives aren't working. Now you could plug them into other ports on the motherboard but you wouldn't be able to fill all the ports and all the NVMe drives without causing issues. And it's little sort of intricacies and differences between motherboards that make this interesting and it's worth checking. It's really important to check because it's so specific to each motherboard in a lot of cases that it's really hard for me to make a recommendation to you generally. Although historically it's always been the case that the top slot gives you the fastest speed, sometimes that can have a negative impact on other things like the graphics card or the speed of the other drives in the system. So it's really important to be aware of. If we go back to the original problem though, I want to show you what's going on with that MSI motherboard now. But before I do that, I want to quickly mention something else. So you will have noticed that when I'm installing this drive, I'm still leaving the thermal pads in place and removing the stickers from the motherboard. 
I did a video previously on why these stickers and heat sinks make a big difference. This drive obviously has its own built-in heat sink, but you'll notice that the motherboard itself has various different heat shieldings on it, as well as the thermal pads to help with conductivity there and heat transfer. Now these are actually really important and do make quite a bit of difference, especially for faster Gen 5 drives, which can get really hot. However, there is also the issue of people peeling stickers off their NVMe SSDs, and I discovered through my testing that you shouldn't. It may void the warranty, and also it doesn't have that much of a difference of impact on the drive itself. Now, if we look at the MSI board, you'll see that with this Gen 4 drive in there, unfortunately the graphics card is still knocking down to X8 lanes. So we're still halving the number of lanes available to it, even when populating that top slot with a Gen 4 drive. So it is unfortunately, as the commenter expected, that drive is now causing the same problem as we saw with the original. Now I want to note this isn't actually that much of a problem. In my testing I showed it didn't make that much of a difference, but it's worth noting. But what you will see also is that putting a Gen 4 drive in a Gen 5 slot, you'll still get Gen 4 speeds. So these things are backwards compatible. It is perfectly possible to put a drive in there and still get four lanes at Gen 4 and the right amount of speed for that drive. So you could do it, you could fill up older ports, with newer drives without any problem. You can see also that this drive's getting around 7,000 megabytes per second read speed, or just a little bit under in my testing. So it is getting the speeds that you'd expect out of it as well. So there are lots of different things to be aware of with NVMe, and it's not immediately obvious. You might think I could just buy a drive and then get it in my system and it'll run as expected and it won't have any negative consequences. Or maybe that you could do what I do quite often, which is just fill the motherboard up with drives. If you can afford it, they're fast drives, they're easy to install. You'd think it won't have any impact, but you might be slowing some of your other drives down, reducing the power of your graphics card potentially, and other things. So it's important to think about all these things and to do your research before you buy this has been the Provoke Pro and I hope you found this useful. If you did, check out the links in the description to other related content that you might find helpful, as well as my tips and tricks playlist. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.